Welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Current Events Class. I am Sabbath Rachel LaFleur, and I have with me today some of our high school students. As you are aware, if you've been keeping up with us, we interviewed some of our high school students a couple of weeks ago. I have more of our high school students to share with us today, and I want to introduce them to you before we start. So I have Ishmael Alahami, who is a junior in our Atla High School. I have Maya Prentice, who is also a junior in Atla High School. I have Layla Anyegbu, who is a junior in Atla High School. I have Kimberly Jackson, who is a sophomore in Atla High School. And then I have Israel Lewis, who is a freshman in Atla High School. Welcome, everyone. How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing pretty well. Good. Our day's been great. Uh, okay, so before we get started, because we have a lot to talk about today, um, I always start off, because we're in the midst of the coronavirus and we're watching all of these things unfold before our eyes on a day-to-day -day basis, I want to start off by asking you um, how your experience has been, especially to those that I have not spoken to as of yet. So I want to start off with Ishmael, because Ishmael, I have not seen you in a little over four weeks now. So it's been about a month since school has closed, and I haven't seen you since then. I haven't spoken to you. So I want to start off with you by asking you how you and uh, Zach Raya, your twin brother, who's also a student in Atla High School, and your parents have been doing in this past month. Uh, well, we've been doing fine. We've been just trying to be careful, not trying to do anything that we can we don't catch anything, we don't get sick. We've been trying to get the, we'd get in the masks, the gloves, hand sanitizer, just to make sure. No one gets sick in the house. Not my grandpa, my mom, nobody at all. Uh, we've also right. been trying to stay stocked up on food, you know, because now when I go to the grocery store, it's just empty. So I always gotta stay stocked up on that. So I gotta monthly order it now. But if you want like a quick overview, everything's been this calm so far. Nothing bad's happened. So let me ask you a question. Um, your father has his own business, um, yeah. correct? So he has his own um, store business. Has he been opening up his business or is his business closed? No, his uh, his business is still open. He's just taking precautions now. Like he's putting a glass cover in front of the counter. So right. no, like it's not like face to face. Right. right. And he's been wearing gloves and masks. So just in case, because people in the store, some of them don't walk in with gloves or masks at all. Okay. So he's just trying to keep himself safe. Okay. All right. And Prism, how about you? Have, how have you and your family been uh, in the past four weeks? Well, good. Sleeping, eating, sleeping. <laughs> Omar, Omar, it's not much. Have any of you been outside in the past four weeks? Have you been outside once um, in the past month or have you pretty much just stayed indoors? I've been outside a few times. I've been okay. outside like three, three or four times. Only because I, I like people. you can be in your house for so long before you look outside like you're like, tangled, like in the movie Tangle, you feel like you're trapped. Okay. What about the rest of you? Have any of you been outside um in the past month? I go out twice a week. Okay, you go out twice a week. And I know for Israel for you, you go out twice a week because you are part of the media team. Um, in the church, and so you help out with the media um, things, right? Yes. Ma'am. Okay. Um, Kimberly, Layla, Prism, what about you all? Um, I went outside yesterday to do laundry. It wasn't fun. Okay. It wasn't fun. Okay. But you pretty much stay indoors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, last time I spoke to Kimberly and Layla, the two of you told me that um, periodically you would have to go out to purchase foods for your families. Are you still doing that? Yeah. Um, we don't go to the food market because my grandma heard something that, like, the seniors, they have a day to themselves. So she yes. went to the but, like, I would still go to the um, light it or something like that if I have to and get, like, alcohol and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Layla? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I don't often go out a lot. It's like maybe 
like maybe once every two weeks or something like that. But it's not really often, often. Okay. All right. And as we're talking about the fact that um, we are all staying home, one of the things that uh, I came across as I was going through articles and looking at the news was how this is affecting teenagers as a whole. And I'm sure you all read the article about how they are saying teenagers have been affected by the coronavirus, by schools being closed, by, by having to stay home for this past month. And many of them are feeling like they've been robbed of memories as they won't be able to graduate. Um, many of them are going to miss prom. Um, I saw a story of a, a young boy who was graduating, who is graduating in June of this year, um, who will obviously not be attending his graduation ceremony, except it to a university in Pennsylvania. But now he says he doesn't know whether or not he's going to be able to go because his mom lost the job as a result of the coronavirus. His father may be laid off from his job. As you know, there are many people who have filed unemployment. And so right now he's not sure where he is going to go to school. Can you all um, can you all understand what they're saying? Do you connect with them? What is your experience like as you hear experiences of other teenagers? Um, Israel, let's start with you. Um, I feel their pain, but then again, I'm, I'm a freshman. I, I just hope that I know it's probably not it's probably not possible, but I hope it don't like the coronavirus don't like go for like three years. Okay. I definitely could relate to them in a way of, you know, the the, um, the memories of not being able to, you know, be with your classmates and also for people who are supposed to be graduating this year. It's definitely not a good, you know, not a pretty sight to be sitting at home. You know, I could understand the anxiety, you know, of wanting to be around your peers, you know, social life. And it's like you're being all alone at home. And, you know, it's difficult, very difficult. So I... I Kimberly, what about you? Um, yeah, like, I think it's taking a toll on them. Like, can't be with people I want to be with, like, can't go outside. Like, I'm just secluded to these four walls. And, like, it's annoying. Okay. What about you, Prism? Well, I mean, things have been different, you know, trying to deal with the six feet apart and stuff. Like, I can't go here. Yes. Um. <clears throat> so, I don't often go out a lot. It's, like, maybe like maybe once every two weeks or something like that, but it's not really often, often. Okay, all right. And as we're talking about the fact that um, we are all staying home, one of the things that uh, I came across as I was going through articles and looking at the news was how this is affecting teenagers as a whole. And I'm sure you all read the article about how they are saying teenagers have been affected by the coronavirus, by schools being closed, by, by having to stay home for this past month. And many of them are feeling like they've been robbed of memories as they won't be able to graduate. Um, many of them are going to miss prom. Um, I saw a story of a, a young boy who was graduating, who is graduating in June of this year, um, who will obviously not be attending his graduation ceremony, except it to a university in Pennsylvania. But now he says he doesn't know whether or not he's going to be able to go because his mom lost the job as a result of the coronavirus. His father may be laid off from his job. As you know, there are many people who have filed unemployment. And so right now he's not sure where he is going to go to school. Can you all um, can you all understand what they're saying? Do you connect with them? What is your experience like as you hear experiences of other teenagers? Um, Israel, let's start with you. Um, I feel their pain, but then again, I'm, I'm a freshman. I, I just hope that I know it's probably not it's probably not possible, but I hope it don't like the coronavirus don't like go for like three years. Okay. Kimberly, what about you? Um, yeah, like, it's taking a toll on me because I like, can't be with 
people I want to be with, like, can't go outside. Like, I'm just secluded to these four walls. And, like, it's annoying. Okay. What about you, Prism? Well, I mean, things have been different. You know, trying to deal with the six feet apart and stuff. Like, I can't go here or there, but I'll adjust sooner or later. Well, I mean, I understand where they're coming from. It's because, like, People who are graduating this year, probably this is like a big moment in their life right now. And now they feel like they're like, they don't get the experience because of what's happening. And I can get where they're coming from. And I do get other people because well, they, maybe they want to go hang out with their friends, but they can't because people don't want people going outside because of the corona. And I do understand. I do feel the same way because I feel like if I would like to go outside, I really can't without wearing a mask. I'm taking all these precautions. I guess go outside because I want to. So it's got to be a reason, because it's like, if I don't do, I do it for no reason, there's a chance I can catch something. I, I, I personally feel the same way with all the teenagers. I do. I feel the same way about it. Okay. But let's go back a month or so ago when we were all sitting um, in our school building and having a common events class. And remember when we first started talking about, about the coronavirus, right? Um. My question is to, to you all, did you all think that it would be to the level of, of what we're looking at now. Because remember a month or so ago, we talked about this in the initial um, discussions of the coronavirus, and we were talking about how uh, Asians were being picked upon and physically and having been assaulted. And now here we are in April, going towards the end of April. School is closed. We've been home for about a month or so now. We have to wear masks when we go outside. They're telling you to wear gloves. They're telling you to wipe down groceries. You have to stand in line when you go to the grocery store. Would you all imagine that it would be what it is right now? Israel, let's start with you. Um, I mean, yes and no. I want to suspect it to be like like this, like a lockdown, basically. But um, I just hope that it ends. I never suspected this. I never expected to be like this serious, if, if that makes sense. But, okay, no. Huh? No, go ahead. But not not being able to like see anybody because of coronavirus, not being able to like um, get the right amount of food that you need because other people have to be there. I mean, other people need um, food supplies. And um, I recently went to the supermarket with my dad and only 15, not 15, maybe seven or 15 people are allowed in that, in, inside the supermarket. And that was just crazy to me, to be honest. So did you have to wait on the line going into the supermarket? Surprisingly, no, because it was at night. It was after prayer, okay. it was after prayer service. It's like nobody okay. was in line. Okay. All right. And um, Kimberly, what about you? Did you imagine that it would be what it is right now when we were talking about this a month or so ago? No. Like, I thought we was going to have to take precautions for sure, but like, I didn't think this would be this much. Okay. And what about you, Prism? Well, after, since the day where we had to leave school and they said we were going to return, I knew that like, things would have been different and we would have never like, go back to how things would have been. So you think that when you say we're not going to go back to the way things used to be, you think that we're just going to have to get used to operating on a daily basis in a different way? Yes, probably. Okay. Um, Layla, what about you? Uh, about a month or so ago, I didn't think things were going to be as bad like this, you know, to the point where people would have to be waiting outside. I to go into a store. I didn't think things would be that bad. So, but I think we're just gonna have to adjust to this from now on because things will never be the same. And Ishmael, what are your thoughts? Well, I think same. I feel like it's gonna be a while until everything goes back to normal. So people have to get used to being indoors a lot, sticking with this lockdown. And just to also comment on how Israel said about the stores, my mm -hmm. father had a similar experience when he went to Stop and Shop. He said that mm -hmm. he was allowed in there for, I think, 30 minutes before he had to leave. And he got a mm -hmm. warning. And mm -hmm. then he said that when he was longer, the cops would actually come and take him out of the store. 
And I was so they actually, well, that's the first time I've actually heard that from anyone's experience. So you, they gave you, they. so what you're saying is they're giving people a certain amount of time to do their shopping. And after that time, oh, okay. you have to leave the store. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this is exactly what my father told me is that he said there's a limit. And if you were over the limit of how long you could be there, they'd call the cops and they would move you out the store. Okay. Now, Ishmael, your father has a business, as we stated earlier. Um, does he go into the same practice of only allowing a certain amount of people into his store or is he just allowing people inside? Well, he, he doesn't have a limit of how many people could come into the store, but there, but how I've seen the store, how he's working so far, there's not that many people going into it. It's okay. just been a slow business, so it's not, it, doesn't, it wouldn't really matter if it was a lot of people because not many people are going into the store at the moment because people are scared. They don't want to, like, go outside and stuff they rather, they rather just do it on like order the food online and stuff so he's like it's his business is starting to go like slowing down okay and so your father um is in the same experience of many people who own businesses and that um businesses are not booming as they used to as a result of people having fear of having um or, or catching the coronavirus uh kimberly you had something to say yeah, um, actually, yesterday, me and my grandma, we went to the store, and it was on 116th, and they put it on the front, they was like, if you don't have a mask, then you can't get service, like, you can't come inside the store, nothing. And they was, like, actually looking, and if you didn't, like, the crackhead had come in, they were like, no, you can't come in, you don't have a mask. I was like, what? Okay. So they are not allowing customers without a mask to enter into their stores, is, is what you're yeah. saying. Um, let me ask you all this question. Uh, on Friday... Uh, the governor of Georgia, as well as some other states, are going to reopen businesses. Um, they are planning to reopen nail salons and uh, bowling um, bowling alleys and massage parlors and um, and barber shops and so forth. What do you all think about that? Do you think that it's too soon to reopen businesses, or do you think that it's okay? The worst is over, and so why not? Nah, um, I'm, go ahead, Kimberly. No, wait. no, it's good. They just need to continue, like probably like, like three people at a time, or they have to like book by an appointment. They need to open it up now. So you think they should open it up? Yes, they should. God, I know. Oh, okay. I disagree. Well, um, it's not it's not the t right time right now. They should wait a little longer because. People will go like running to the salons and everywhere, crowding them up. And, you know, it's still not 100 percent sure uh, if you're cleared or not. You might not even know if you have it or you're on the verge of getting it and you cannot affect everyone else. And if they do open up, they would have to do the, you know, maintain the policy of three or two people in at one time. It's just you might as well just wait until the um, actual quarantine is lifted, which will be like maybe a couple of weeks from now. Prism, what do you think? Do you think it's too soon for them to be opening up businesses or or what? Well, I think it's too soon because when Florida had opened the beaches and then they got like a number amount of cases happening, like, like people started dying and stuff. I don't think it's like the time to open up places for that. Okay. And Ishmael, what did you want to say? I want to say that well, yeah, I also think that it's too soon to uh, open up the businesses, mostly because of how it might get crowded and it might also start spreading more cases, as how uh, Prism mentioned with the beaches. And also, it's actually with many businesses closing, it's actually started to help uh, the, um, the, the environment and stuff, because you notice there's less pollution in the air, there's less littering. Because with, every, with everything going on, it's actually helped the earth more and stuff. And I think that's maybe we should keep it closed maybe longer just so the earth can heal just a little bit more. Um, that's very interesting, Ishmael, that you make mention of that. The fact that people are indoors and not able to go outside, it has helped pollution. And I had an article last night that had some numbers um some very interesting numbers affecting New York City. I'm trying to see if I can pull that up. But um, while I'm looking for that, let me ask um, you all, because some of you said that, yeah, they should open it up. And others of you said it's too soon. For those of you who stated that they should open it up, 
And I think Layla, you gave a great example that once they open it up, people are just going to run to these places. So here's my question for you. Is it a necessity? Do you think that it is extremely important at this point in time, with the coronavirus still going on, with people still being affected, with people still dying from the coronavirus, to open up businesses like massage parlors and bowling alleys um, and nail salons? Do you think that those businesses are of necessities at this point in time. And Kimberly, I'm gonna let you start first since you said that they should open up these businesses. It's not important, but it's still like uh, a taste of reality again. Like you can feel like you can feel yourself a little bit, you know, instead of being in pajamas and stuff all the time. Well, I don't think it's such a necessity to like uh to go like um needing to go to the barbers and yeah and um israel what do you think bowling alleys uh, that's not necessary so who's gonna go out and play ball um and bowl go bowling mm-hmm. barbershop to me is really important you need to open like that um yeah, maybe just one barber one barber with two barbers in inside and like two people at a time but like the barbers are ne- uh, is necessary to me but bowling alleys and all that stuff is not really necessary so as we're talking about uh, talking about that there are some states who are planning to reopen uh, this week, one of the things that has been going on in the news, and I'm sure you all have seen this, is that people have been protesting. Um, they've been protesting the um, social distance. They've been protesting being uh, made to stay at home. And they want the businesses to open back up. They want the economy to continue to go on. They don't want to stay in their homes and so forth. And I understand, listening to some of you as well, how frustrating it has been staying home for others has not been too bad. So I understand um, the mindset of people not wanting to be home. But with that being said, the fact that they are actually protesting this and are trying to push governors in other states to reopen businesses back up again, what do you think is behind the mindset of these individuals? Isn't it the the governor's responsibility to take care of the people in their state, to make sure that they are safe, to protect them from harm and danger? Or do you think that these governors are just giving in because they cannot take the pressure of it? What do you think? Ishmael, what do you think? Uh, well, I do believe the governors are doing, or they are trying to protect the people, but I feel like people, what they're thinking more or less is that the governors are locking them up. And maybe they feel like now that they're like animals in a zoo. They This is the one place that they know now. And maybe some people are getting upset about that and they feel like they have to fight against this and they feel like now since they're like animals in the zoo they have to like they have to fight against this they, they deserve their freedom but i don't think they have the right mindset right now because they don't know how highly contagious the coronavirus is or that how fast it can spread and they're trying to do something outside everybody's not even six feet and that might cause many cases to pop up and i actually read something about uh, i think a few people when uh, um when a protest happened a few people actually did catch the coronavirus Okay. And what do you think, um, Prism? Well, I think that um, most people want to go back outside, mostly for money. And money tends to drive people crazy, especially when they have like a certain amount and then they're not accustomed to getting it all the time. So I think it's best if they just stay inside. Okay. Okay. Let me go to Israel. Okay. But um, I agree with Maya and um, Ish. Like, um, young people, they didn't. The, the teens, they're not taking it seriously because on social media, they think it's a joke. I mean, yeah, it's funny here and there, but like, but like, most of the time, you have to take it seriously. I don't think most of them are taking it seriously, they're just taking it as a joke mm-hmm. to me. You all have heard the fact that people, there are some people. Trump supporters, to be exact, to be specific, that believe that this is a hoax, that this is not real, that um, this is made up, that the Democrats and the deep state, they're the ones pushing this uh, coronavirus, 
virus danger and that people are not really dying in the thousands as they say and people are not really being infected um, to the point that they are stating. So when you hear something like this, what do you all think about people who think in that mindset? Trump supporters to be exact. Um, well, Israel, what do you say to those people? Well, basically, well, whatever Trump says, they're going to do it. Whatever Trump do, they do. Whatever Trump say, they say. It's basically, whatever, whatever. They just follow Trump. Whatever he does, they do. Because apparently that's their leader for some reason. Ishmael, what do you think? Well, I do I do agree like what Israel says. Pretty much monkey say, monkey do. It's like whatever they, he says, they're pretty much going to do it. But I do believe that them thinking this is a hoax is kind of stupid because with all matter, the U.S. is running the most cases right now with the corona, and that you can't really fake that. I mean, with the, how high the cases are, that's really hard to fake this thing. Like, and like all these cases around the world, and you think is the hoax is kind of dumb. It's, it's, you can have like there's like a hundred thousand people who are proof of this thing. It's not no joke. This is the real deal, and this could kill you. Prism, what do you think? I think the idea of them thinking it's a hoax is a bad idea because at the beginning, if I recall correctly, uh, Trump had said that only like four people were gonna die or so, and then look, it's a whole pandemic now. Um, and Layla, I, I was saying that I think people got to be out of their mind to, to just think that this is a hoax and this is just all a game and it's not true. That's just like, that's dumb because if you don't, like Ish said, the cases of New York and the U.S. is very high and like people are actually dying. That's not a game. So it's just, it's really stupid to, for them to think that. All right, um, I want to come back and talk about some other things. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back on the other end to finish our discussions. about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. We are back from the break. And I want to ask you all this question as we were talking about Triple H Trump supporters and them believing that this is a hoax. How do you think Tribulation Trump has handled the coronavirus? Layla, let's start with you. 
Okay, so I think that he has handled it very horribly. He thinks it's a joke and he thinks it's a game, which is not. And you know, he hasn't been taking the steps that he needed to t- that he needs to take to be helping us. And it's just it's it's unbelievable. He's he's going at it in a bad way. That's what I think. Prism. Um, I think that Trump is handling the virus like the way how he handles everything else. Like the way how he handles stuff makes no sense. Like the and then after he makes his comments about the virus, he stays defending himself, and that just causes like the virus to like become more and more cases to happen. Okay, uh, Israel. Israel. Um, he's handling like it's a joke. Like uh, I haven't heard anything from him, so like, that's how you know. That he's just taking it like it's a joke to me. Kimberly? Um, I mean, he's trying to help her a little bit, like by sending out supplies and stuff. But other than that, he don't really know what to do. That's like, I don't know. Okay. Ishmael, what do you think? How has Tribulation Trump been handling the coronavirus, in your opinion? Well, to agree, I agree with all my classmates, but I also do believe that he's mostly looking out for himself. He doesn't really care about everybody. He's mostly mm-hmm. just looking out for him, his health, and how much, and then also maybe how much money he can make off of this, with the stock market and stuff, and how much people are buying hand sanitizer and stuff. He's mostly just looking out for himself. He doesn't care what happens to the people of the U.S. He just mostly wants himself to be fine. That's true. And let me ask you all this question. How are you prepared to handle um, not being able to go to school in the fall? Let's say, because right now we don't know how long this is going to take. And I know that many of you are anticipating um, this to end at some point, and it will at some point end. Um, But again, we don't know when it's going to end. How are you all coping with the possibility that there may not be school as far as being physically able to attend school in the fall of this year. Have you all thought about that at all? No. Yeah. Yeah. Messed up. No. I didn't think always. And and what have you all been thinking in regards to that? Are you all prepared for that? Or what is your what is your thought set? I don't want to Ishmael, let's start with you. Well, I mean, I'm like, at the moment, I'm pretty good right now. I, I make sure I get up early, I do my work. I'm pretty good right now, but I, I, to see maybe if it could go all the way to the fall, I mean, that will be kind of annoying because, you know, I don't get to see any of my friends at school. You know, it's, it'll be kind of annoying to see them face to face. You know, I mean, we, yeah, we can always do the Google Hangouts, but, you know, so there's always something different about face to face than voice ch- video face or FaceTime. This is always a little different. This is a little different experience. And it'll, it'll also be kind of a weird experience to sit here, always watching out the window of a day, looking like, you know, no one's still inside. It's still going on. It's coronavirus is still in the air. And no one's done anything about it. It'll be like a little scary too. And Prism, what do you think? Have you thought about that? Well, I did actually. And I'm 50-50 about it because I kind of do miss the fact of going to school. But then... It's like, I kind of like the idea of waking up kind of later. So, I'm 50, 50. Okay. And when, have you ever thought about the fact that if you're not able to go to school, you all, um, three of you here are juniors. Next year, you're going to be seniors. Um, are, have you all thought about not being able to have the senior experiences as many of the teenagers are experiencing right now, not having to, you know, have the memories of a senior year and high school and so forth? Have you all thought along that line? And I'm talking to the juniors specifically. Ishmael, have you thought about that? Um, not really. That has not crossed my mind. I've been mostly thinking about like how me how I feel not to go to school, but. I have not crossed my mind about like what experiences I might miss, but at the same time, it's, it doesn't really bother me personally because I feel like these experiences I might miss, it won't, it's really this over my own life. 
And mm-hmm. personally, I do feel like my own life is a little more important than maybe certain experiences. But I mean, I do understand that as many certain things like you, a lot of people experience certain like th- certain things and see like you heard like you aced every test this see uh, this semester, or you did this, or you, this is like you got the highest in the, out of every in front of class. Like there's gonna be certain things that people are not gonna like get to experience. But personally, I feel like this is not gonna amount to any to how my life is like my li- myself living. I do feel like it, it won't amount. Okay, um, I certainly understand that. It makes such perfect sense, and I totally agree with you um, with that. As far as if you have a choice to choose between um, memories and and living and your health being well, which would you choose? And I hear what you're saying is, I'd rather choose life. I'd rather be able to live and be healthy and so forth. Um, do the rest of you feel the same way that Ishmael had just stated? Kimberly, do you feel that same way or you feel differently? Um, I feel, I kind of feel, I mean, it, it's along the lines that I'm going to be a junior next year, so I'm kind of not that ticked off. But, like, if this continues on, then I'll be mad because I, I want to be, I want to have my senior year in school, not in home school. That's my day. Okay. And I know that this is probably far from you, Israel, because you're a freshman. So um, it'll be a few years before you become a senior in high school. Um, But what do you think, even as a freshman just going on next year, you're going to be a sophomore. What do you think about that? Uh, I just I feel bad for the the juniors, like the juniors around the world, not just the juniors in the school. I just feel bad for them that they won't be able to. There's a possibility they might be able. They might not be able to graduate next year. That's just really bad. Okay, so let me turn the corner for a second and ask you about summer because summer is coming up. We're getting ready to go into the month of May, um, and obviously there. I stated last week as I was talking to the middle school students that Mayor De Blasio has stated that they are going to close all outdoor swimming pools for the summer. They're not going to open up over the summer. And there's a big possibility that the beaches may follow suit. So have you all thought about, because summer is closer certainly than the fall of this year. Have you all thought about how much your summer is going to change and um, what you won't be able to do this summer that you know, that you are normally able to do? Have you thought about that? Let's start with Prism. Wait. Well, I mean, I've thought about it, like, a few times when I'm free, but, like, I'm not going to the pool. I don't mind because I don't really like the pool because all the people I go in it don't know what they have. Not a mean way, but I, I don't mind the idea of it staying close. Okay. And Kimberly, what were you going to say? Oh, wait, so they said only outdoor pools is closing. <laughs> Uh, yes, but um, I suspect that indoor pools will be closed too because how would you stop social distancing um, with a large group of people in an indoor pool? Oh, because I got a YMCA pass, so I was going to go there if they were closed. But um, it's a private establishment, but anyway, um, it's still going to be messed up though because, you know, like we like to go to the beach and stuff because the beach is more better than the pool and it's like, I want to go to like amusement park and stuff. It's going to be all closed. The most I could do, and that's, that's if they open the parks, I'd probably go there, but that's it, really, and be home. It's boring. One of the things that I think about often is how privileged you all are as young people being in Atla High School and being taught the things that you are taught from the Honorable James David Manning as you listen to the Manning Report and the Trust in the Lord Hour every day. And we know that spiritually that this is taking place because God is angry. We know that spiritually that this is all by the hand of God. And so when you look at the things that you've been witnessing on a day-to-day basis and you witness all of the death that is taking place, and I'm not sure if any of you personally know anyone who has had the coronavirus, um, I'm sure that most of you, all of us, at some point has been in contact with someone who's had the coronavirus. But spiritually, as you're looking at all of this, and we're talking about people saying that this is a joke, this is a hoax, it's not real, and so forth. What do you think going forth, what you know to be true? Ishmael, I want to start off with you. 
Um, what do I know being true? Well, I do know for a fact that, well, first of all, let's just say, I don't really know anybody who has the corona, but uh, I I I do know, well, because I've gone on to a place called Amigo. It's a place where you could just talk to people randomly online. And I've I, when I was on there, a few people have mentioned that they know people who do have corona and they've gotten very sick. Like they've gotten high fevers. They've started coughing a lot. They've been, they've felt very weak. I personally, and to just see that, you know, like, and some people don't even have the same symptoms. I know that some, some people don't even get the fever. Some people don't even know they have it until it's too late, until they start getting really sick. And they'll be like, it's too late. Can't save you. And that is a thing sad because I know it affects people differently. Because when I was, one person said that uh, they're actually, their grandmother had it and they didn't know their grandmother was fine. But until one day she just was, she one day said she was sick and then they took her to the hospital. She said he had it and the next day she died. Mm. And I found that shocking because not many people, all people experience differently. Some people have fever, some people have light colds, some people have serious colds, and some people act like it, you know, it's treated the same way as a flu. And that's what I find also thing very shocking that how it, uh, different it affects people. And so spiritually, Ishmael, um, knowing the truth and hearing Pastor Manning preach about all of this, how does that make you feel? Do you look at everything differently knowing that truth? Do you think you do? Well, knowing the truth, I, when I look at everything, I'm not personally that scared because I feel like I'm protected. I'm not going to get harmed. I've tried to stay right, righteous, so I'm, I personally believe that I'm protected, but I do take precautions just in case. But I do personally think that I'm protected, and anybody I feel like who has it, I feel like maybe they've done something wrong, disrespect God in some way. And maybe this is their punishment now, is that they, he's given them this disease. And I okay. think maybe that's why there's so many cases, because it's maybe all these people have disrespected him, maybe false idols and stuff, and now he's showing them that he he's tired of seeing all of this. And Israel, what do you think? Um, I agree with Ish. I feel like I'm protected and stuff. And as Pastor said last Saturday, that God, no, whenever, whatever services, he said that God is, he is mad and bitter. He's, he is almost upset because of the things that's happening. I understand why he would do that. So this is, this is God's way of telling us to get right with him. And like, yeah, just get right with God. Basically. And Prism, what do you think? Well, I think that since that pastor was speaking, like he knew that something was going to happen like this and he'd been preaching about it for like a good amount of years. I'm not like, I'm not scared about it or anything because I'm not going outside or anything. So I'm like, I'm used. Okay. Well, um, from being taught, what I'm, from being what, what I'm um, taught in school, you know, I know, I know, like things were, like this was gonna happen, and you know, it was that time to come. But I mean, I it makes me like see things differently, if you could say, and uh, uh, also that you know, it helps to think about you know um, what what was going to happen because you know we were taught that, and you know we went over it, so. It's, you know, it's like a 50-50 thing. Uh, my next question to you all is, in regard to the coronavirus and the things and the effects that it's having on the world, um, Ishmael brought up a great point earlier, and that was the fact that there's no pollution out there. So I'm, wanna, I'm going to run some numbers by you in an article that I read last night, and then I'm going to ask you about what your thoughts. And this article is in regards to how the coronavirus has affected New York City specifically, which I thought is interesting because we all reside in New York City. So mm -hmm. it's a 2,637% increase in unemployment claims. So, so these are people who have lost their job as a result of the coronavirus. There is a 7% decrease in trash collection in Manhattan, okay? As a result of the, of the coronavirus, there is an 18% decrease in morning electricity usage. So what they're stating is that people are not using um, electricity as much as they used to prior to being um, shut in or quarantined. It goes on to say 42% 
um, complaints about um, loud televisions. So obviously people are home more, so they're watching a lot of television more so or their computers. There's a 90%, I, I found this interesting. There's a 90% decrease in subway ridership. All right, 90%. Um, people are not riding the subways they used to, even though it looks like people are still riding the subways, okay? And what I wanted to get to, 19.9 um, decrease in overall crime um, as the city has shut down. So there is less crime as there was before. And this is the point that Ishmael made. There is 60% dec decrease in traffic at the busiest bridges and tunnels. And so, as he spoke about, there is less pollution that is in the air because there's less people driving their cars and so forth. So as I read these numbers to you, and we talk about uh, the coronavirus and the effects, what do you think about this? Prism, what do you think? Uh, I think that all these numbers that are decreasing now than from when they were before, that this will affect the economy. And affecting the economy can cause, like, stuff to happen within the people. But even social workers could maybe lose their jobs because there no money will be brought forth, and that would not be a good sign. Okay. Um, Israel, you were going to say something? Um, yeah, as she, like she said, um, like, Knowing that there's like less people outside and business business are like they're gonna like get shut down because no people are coming. But like I find it really surprising that eighty percent of people are are using electricity. That's really shocking to me. Okay, why do you say why is it shocking for you? Because you're home and I suspect like people that like, be on their phones or laptops and stuff like that, watching movies or all that. So it's just really shocking to me that eighty percent people are like using it. Okay. Uh, Ishmael, what do you think? Well, I believe, I think that this actually shows how much we have an impact on the environment and stuff. That us being quarantined now, all of a sudden, the environment, the air is cleaner and stuff with no more pollution. It just shows you how much uh, damage that we can cause, how much damage humans cause to the environment, how much pollution we put in the air, how much litter we throw on the floor. It shows how much damage we actually do on a daily basis. And now with everybody here, it just shows you, like, what will happen if we actually just tried not to. And see, and it will show you how cleaner it can get. Right. And so, obviously, as, um, you know, whenever they, whenever this is going to end, and again, we don't know when it's going to end, um, this is going, it's going to resume is going to start back up again and all of these other things will take place again. But um, do you think that it will ever go back to be the same again? Or do you think that this is just, we are going to have to do realities? What do you yeah. think, Kimberly? Who said it? I think Cuomo, it was Cuomo, Cuomo, whatever their name is, the governor or the mayor, one of them said that it was like, we're going to like, we're going to have to have a new normal. Like, yeah. So, we're probably still gonna have to like wear masks and stuff, like even when this is over. And like, I don't know, but it's still gonna be like different, not the same that we know it. Okay, and Israel, what do you think? Um, I agree with Kimberly. This this is gonna be like a normal life, and even in, even if it's gone, right? What if it comes back? We have to do we have to do this all over again, and mm -hmm. just it'll just be a habit to us. Yeah, that's a that's a very um, interesting um, thought, um, Israel. And we know that there are people in South Korea and China, um, and this has come out of those uh, areas that people have tested positive again for the coronavirus after having it um, one time. And so the question is, the question that was asked is, is it possible that people could be reinfected with the coronavirus? 
And the obvious answer is, is that they don't know, right? They don't know anything about this virus. They're still trying to research it. They're still trying to find vaccines to deal with it. They don't know anything about this virus. And I go back to say the reasons they don't know is because this is a spiritual thing. This is being done by the hand of God. And so they're not going to know unless God would show them. But um, Israel, as you have brought up that point, what if we have to deal with this again in the fall? I mean, they're saying that this could, it's a possibility that this is going to go through the summer and then we have to deal with this again in the fall. I mean, how much can you all cope with? Are you all prepared to deal with that? Are you preparing yourself mentally and spiritually to deal with that? And I think I asked you all this before, but in light of what Israel just stated, that, um, you know, what if it comes back? In the same way common colds do or the flu does. And we know that this is certainly something completely different from those things. But what if it does come back? What do you think, Ishmael? Um, well, I think if it does come back, well, I feel like if it does come back, we will be a little more prepared because now since we've experienced it, we might, we might have more knowledge about it. We might have maybe make better things. I might be able to counter it more. But I feel like we might go through the same things again, where we are gonna people are gonna run out, buy toilet paper, Lysol, hand sanitizer, and start buying them out the stores. I feel like it's gonna do the same thing again, where we're just like people are just gonna go crazy, like how like it's gonna like it's the end of the world. We gotta hurry up and buy everything, get in a bunker, and make sure no one like we have everything ready, buying like powdered milk and stuff. Like I feel like it's gonna be the same thing if it happens again. Like another like people are gonna treat it like it's the end of the world. So let me ask you all a question based upon uh, the statements you just made, Ishmael. And that is, as we talk about the effects of the coronavirus, supermarkets, um, Kimberly and Layla, who go out every so often to purchase things for their family and so forth. Um, supermarkets are being affected by the coronavirus. Many of their workers are testing positive for the coronavirus. And Pastor has stated um, many times over the past few weeks that eventually supermarkets are going to shut down, right? Because they can't risk their workers, um, you know, having the coronavirus and so forth. And so when you think about that, and I read an article about that last night as well, the supermarkets are planning to close. There have been meat plants that have closed as a result of their workers being sick with COVID-19 and so forth. How do we function? Now, let me set the premises. We know biblically that they said that well, God has stated a famine is going to come. We know that we are in the tribulation. And I have to say that. I can't talk about saying that. So we know that there are famines and earthquakes and other things that are going to take place because God has said so, right? But as we're looking at the virus and how it's affecting food, and I, I'm bringing this up because Ishmael, you touched on this. How do we prepare for this or your families preparing for this? Are they stocking up on foods and so forth? What do you all think? Like they probably they going excessive because like <laughs> we can go to the supermarket and be like, who we have like cards and they be like, oh, they're like no reason. But like they just need to. I mean, it's necessary because we don't know supermarkets might close and everything. So we're gonna be fighting over the last grain of rice if we don't stock up now. So. And Prism, what do you think? Well, my family has been stocking up for like since the beginning. So now it's just not really nothing to stock up on. But okay. Yes, we have been since um since the beginning, you know, going out, getting things, the necessities, the essentials. But um when time comes we'll probably need to go back. But for now we're we've been doing a Pretty good job stocking up. We're, we're stocking up here and there, but I, throughout the future, we're probably going to have to stock up more. And Israel? Well, I have my I have been stocking up with my father. at the store. He's been able to help me. But I do feel like that with stocking up, even though one people may be stocking up, is actually leaving less for others. And I feel like that's just bad. So I feel like people shouldn't be stocking up more. They should be trying to evenly spread out the food and stuff. Because there's some people who can't make it. Like, some old people can't really make it to stores fast because of a condition they have or maybe because of their back, back problems or maybe because of arthritis. And they can't make it that fast. 
and because of that, they might be, maybe they'll, they want to go get something in the shelf empty. And I know some stores have been doing this where they like they limit the eggs and the toilet paper, but other stores are not. And you see, like I've seen many pictures of like old people trying to find food when like the, the shelves are just clean cleaned off. And that's also with the uh, because I know a couple people whose parents are doomsday kind of like doomsdayish preppers, and um, they tell me that they'll go to the store early and they'll like buy what, what they need as fast as possible. And they'll buy like bulks of it and they have coupons for the stuff. But then when they when they tell when they go back, the shelves are cleaned off. And even then they've cleaned off many shelves and stuff. Like they'll buy like six packs of waters, five of these chips, or a bunch of cup of noodles. Like they're buying a lot of stuff, not thinking about how the other people who might need it. But even though I feel like prepping is good, it's not helping everybody, it's just helping yourself. Yeah, that is uh, certainly well, the elderly, whether or not they're able to go out, um, we know that it's hard for them. And if they don't have um, people who are helping them, uh, it makes it even harder. So we certainly want to pray for the elderly and the seniors there. Well, we are uh, just about done. But before we close out this segment of the current events class, I want to ask you a one last question. And that is, if you could give one word to all the people out there who are going through this coronavirus, all of us who are in the midst of this, because we're going through this together, what is the one word that you would tell people? What's that one word? Um, let's start with Israel. Let's listen. This is Pastor Manning. Okay. So listen. Okay. Good. Um, Prism. Um. I'm not so sure one word specifically, but okay. I want them to like take care of themselves, like the immune systems, because that's what's important to me. Okay. Kimberly. Kimberly. Okay. Say that again. I said be mindful. Okay, be mindful. Ishmael. Uh, I would have to say share because in time of need we have to share each other, like share each other's company, share each other's food. So I think it would have to be share. Okay, share. Layla. Okay, so one word I would say, well, it's not really one word. It would, it would be um, like keep, keep the faith, like have faith that you won't catch it. Okay, all right. Uh, the one word I would use and I would tell people is pray. We certainly need to pray in these days. It is extremely important. Um, I can't even stress that enough. We need to pray. Um, I want to thank you all for sharing with me today. I know we've had some um, technical um, things going on with the computers and your phones and so forth. But I want to thank you all for taking the time to share with me today. And I want to thank you all out there for watching the current events class and listening to the young people as they express their thoughts and their opinions. We, don't, we want to thank Pastor Manning for making this all possible. I pray that everyone um, out there will continue to pray if you are praying. For those of you who have been chosen and made part of the elect, um, continue to listen to the words of the Honorable James David Manning and to follow, you know, every day, because every day we need to hear from Almighty God. So thank you again. And I want to say peace out to all of you. Peace. 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 peace.